In 2019, when I first drafted this article, I knew very few writing instructors who taught synchronously online via web conferencing. At the time, most of the literature in online writing instruction and blended learning questioned the value of synchronous online instruction. To both scholars and practitioners, online learning's benefits were inextricably linked to its asynchronicity. Online courses were designed to be fully asynchronous and blended or hybrid courses were designed to take advantage of in-person synchronicity and online asynchronicity. There didn't seem to be a place for synchronous online learning. Then COVID hit and suddenly everyone was teaching in Zoom. I've revised this during the period in which instructors were forced to learn how to teach synchronously online under extreme duress. Instructors rose to the challenge admirably. Many of them grew to like teaching on Zoom, at least sometimes. Some instructors developed innovative synchronous online pedagogies. Others chose to teach asynchronously online as often as possible. And many, though not all, have welcomed the return to in-person instruction. As I look back at the artifacts in this web text, I recognize that most readers will be intimately familiar with the tools I use, such as Zoom and Google Docs. Yet this web text isn't about tools. It's about pedagogy. It's about leveraging a given tool's affordances to improve student learning. And this means identifying not just what we want students to learn, but how best to facilitate that learning. To that end, I maintain that these artifacts and this web text as a whole are still salient, even five years after data collection. Artifact three, which focuses on collaborative learning in Google Docs, hasn't aged as well as the others. I no longer need to coax students to talk with each other via the native chat feature in their Google Doc, for I now use breakout rooms where students actually do talk with each other. Yet the takeaways in that section still hold up. Low stakes collaborative writing boosts social and cognitive presence. And it's nice to be able to watch students co-create that knowledge together in real time in the native Google Doc chat feature, which is an affordance that is no longer available to me. Those conversations now happen in breakout rooms, so they're no longer transparent. Artifacts 1, 2, and 4, which focus on one-to-many instruction mediated through web conferencing platforms, those still do hold up. Encouraging students to use the chat area liberally is perhaps something that most instructors do in Zoom, although I'm not always sure. Um, I encourage back channel conversations when I'm lecturing to boost social presence. I also ask everyone to type something in the chat every couple of minutes to sustain engagement. Perhaps my favorite synchronous online teaching affordance is the one that I still don't see a lot of, even post pandemic. I don't see instructors building what I'll dub independent yet visible activities in which students post their responses somewhere publicly so that everybody in class can quickly see everybody else's work. I would like to see more instructors take advantage of this and to do so in areas beyond the Zoom chat, which moves far too quickly to track easily, or tools like Padlet, which are anonymous. The idea behind many of these activities as I design them is to foster both cognitive and social presence. Cognitive through immediate feedback from me and social through a sense of solidarity among peers, which will further enhance their learning when they break into groups. While switching screen layouts instantaneously is only possible in Adobe Connect, it's easy to replicate these activities in Zoom and Google Docs. For example, I could design a table in Google Docs for everyone to populate signing off their work with their initials. During the activity, I would encourage students to turn their webcams off for it's an independent activity and they don't need to see anyone. And I would screen share so that the activity that they're working on is, is visible in the Zoom interface. 
One advantage with this method is that the Google Doc table can be accessed after the class session, which isn't something that was possible uh, in the native Adobe Connect chats. And then that Google Doc table becomes part of the class notes. While most instructors who taught in person prior to the pandemic are back in the classroom, and most fully online classes are still fully asynchronous, I believe that all instructors, fully online, hybrid, and even face-to-face -face instructors, will continue to teach synchronously online in some capacity. Of this, I am certain. Some of this will be born out of just-in-time necessity, such as an instructor's need to quarantine during illness. Some will be planned in advance to accommodate extended travel, like conferences, <clears throat> so that instructors can retain asynchronous class session instead of putting an entire week online asynchronously. Most importantly, I believe that more instructors will occasionally choose to teach synchronously online because sometimes, the pedagogical benefits of doing so exceed what is possible either online, asynchronously, or in person. As many instructors now know from direct experience, there are countless advantages of teaching synchronously online, such as the ones that I emphasize in this web text. Increased social and teacher presence, immediacy, instant feedback, and sometimes these advantages are more effectively realized in Zoom than in person. Ultimately, my hope is that this web text may serve as a resource for instructors as they continue to develop their online synchronous pedagogy, as well as a resource for WPAs as they can consider whether and why to further develop their online and hybrid programs and help instructors learn how to teach effectively in these modalities. Thank you.